I'm here today to talk about uh, cannabis plant. Uh, cannabis sativa is the base plant for both hemp and marijuana. It's exactly the same plant. It's one plant. The only difference that creates a separate definition of hemp is the level of tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, the psychoactive component of the plant. A uh, hemp plant and a marijuana plant are the same except for that difference. Um, by legal definition, as now set forth in the 2018 Farm Bill, hemp is legally defined as any part of the cannabis plant containing 0.3% THC or less, 0.3%. On the marijuana side, a marijuana grower is looking for 10%, even more, if they possibly can, uh, can grow that, um, whereas hemp must be 0.3% or less. So we've made that distinction in our current uh, iteration of hemp laws. If we go back in time, this is an ancient plant. We've known about the production of cannabis for 10,000 years. We find evidence in uh, uh, archaeological digs in China and in Egypt of the, of the use of the plant for fibers and for medicine. Uh, it's one of the first plants that was cultivated by man. Very, very important to, uh, to the survival uh, and use of the plant. When we bring it to a more modern level, uh, in 1619, when the Jamestown colonists established the first settlements, um, each of the colonists was actually required to grow hemp. It was that important to them. King George required that each colonist send so much hemp back across the ocean. It was that important. We move forward and uh, George Washington, our first president, uh, the hills of Mount Vernon were covered in hemp. He said, uh, sow the Indian hemp seed everywhere. We move on to uh, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said that hemp is of the first necessity to the wealth and protection of the country. He didn't say defense or money or anything. He said hemp is of the first necessity. So it was that important to people. Um, for about a, uh, the first 162 years of the existence of our country, uh, cannabis was perfectly legal and hemp was a very important crop. Um, the word canvas comes from the word cannabis. About 80% of our paper in this country was made from hemp prior to about 1883 or so. Um, Hemp processing at that time was done primarily by slaves. It was a very labor-intensive process. After the Civil War and the emancipation of the slaves, then it became less economical to produce hemp because of the high labor costs. So we made a shift at that point uh, and started obtaining our fiber from trees and our forests. Uh, so from time of emancipation, 1865 or thereabouts, um, we switched away, away from hemp just because of economics. During that same time, though, cannabis still appeared on the uh, U.S. pharmacopoeia showing uh, potential treatment for over 100 different illnesses. So it was certainly widely used um, in, in medicine, in nutritional supplements, in uh, uh, for fiber and rope and uh, textiles and paper and so forth. Um, in 1917, a German immigrant by the name of George Schlichten invented and subsequently patented a mechanical hemp decorticator or a, a machine that would process the hemp and do what was traditionally the work of slaves. Um, as a result of the introduction of the mechanical decorticator, the economic and commercial viability of that hemp plant came right back. And uh, there were uh, industrialists in the uh, paper and the publishing industry, large holdings of forest lands. Um, we had others working on uh, the development of 
synthetic fibers from petroleum products, and so forth. And all of those products were threatened by the re-emergence re of the hemp industry. Uh, and so with the influence of those players and the political influence that they had, they um, mounted a campaign that was has been now known as Reefer Madness, uh, based upon class and race divisions to instill fear and propaganda into people that said this is a dangerous plant. Uh, as a result, we wound up with Congress passing in 1937 the, uh, tax, the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which essentially made the plant illegal based on uh, the need to purchase a tax stamp in order to be a producer. But it, essentially, it rendered the plant illegal uh, at that time. Uh, again, based not upon the uses of the plant, but upon the, the, um, what we would now call fake news that was promulgated to influence, to influence people. Um, today we see congressional debates and they're all televised and so forth. By reading through the congressional record, we know that there was no uh, House debate at all. And the debate in the Senate lasted about two and a half minutes. And then this measure passed by tellers, which is consensus. In other words, it wasn't a, vote, a, a per person vote per uh, per representative, who votes which way. It was, is everybody pretty much in agreement with this? Is it the concession? It's known as tellers. And that's how that law was passed in 1937.